Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tower Casuals, the Destiny podcast. I am your host, Josh, and normally you would be hearing Corey's sultry voice, but uh, a little bit of uh, holiday scheduling mishap. He forgot that he had a uh, Christmas party to go to at the office tonight. So, instead, flying in with me to join me on the tower is the one, the only, our Swiss Army Knife Guardian, the Raid Master himself, Joasis. E- eager Edge skating in here. What's up, guys? Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna eager edge me off the fucking tower. Uh, Joe is Joe has been gracious enough to join us tonight. He was already going to before Corey was out of here, but uh, we are doing a two man show tonight. Uh, if you have been around the community for any length of time in the Discord or uh, going back to some of our past episodes, uh, Joe was writing in a bunch of questions uh, about this time last year, I think, and. Uh, <clears throat> was part of our episode 100 with some of his great questions. Uh, he has been a pretty big part of our community, uh, part of the clan, and is, at, in fact, leading some dungeon runs tomorrow. By the time you're listening to this, the dungeon will be live, because I'm not posting this until after the dungeon, so that Joe and I can talk about everything that was data mined from it. I'm deliberately withholding information from everybody until it's out there in the wild. Um uh, <laughs> Joe. Today for us, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Today for us. Uh later for everybody else. Uh quick programming note. When we're we are recording this in the middle of the game awards, there will be a lightfall trailer with strand gameplay shown. Um we are probably not going to pause to talk about it. Uh just as a fair like warning, that will probably be talked about next week. Uh simply because we all know historically how bad my internet connection is. And I'm really not wanting to tempt fate by having Twitch open on another screen right now while we're trying to do this. So we're going to hold off. If screen caps happen to come into my Twitter feed, I'm going to be watching. Um, then we will uh, we'll talk about it briefly. And if uh, obviously if Bungie wins any sort of awards uh, tonight, we'll, we'll talk about those real quick. But Joe, let's let's dive right into the nitty gritty of it. We had a new season start this week. We did, we did. Uh, season of the Seraph. Uh, Got to admit, I was kind of like losing hope that we were going to get back to Rasputin. Uh, I think anybody who's heard me talk about the game at any point in time knows that this is not exactly a storyline that I'm jazzed about. Um, I historically do not like Rise of Iron. Warmind, I really couldn't have cared less about and season of the worthy well i think we all share the same opinion on season of the worthy uh it's just been a really underwhelming story arc for me um the little seeds that were planted in d1 fine okay cool like rasputin was there and then he wasn't uh and the fallen saber strike when i had to play that the other night just kind of like reiterated everything i don't like about this plot line but i'm interested and intrigued for the first time ever because of one specific individual joe and who's that zivu arath is here baby zivu arath has finally arrived uh she's been kind of teasing for a little while Uh, similar to how savathun was we've actually had zivu arath getting built up um obviously from the books of sorrow and uh the taken king but uh she's actually been getting built up inside of destiny 2 since the siege of the dreaming city began and she's kind of played like little bit parts here and there and season of the hunt uh the wrathborn hunts that was us dealing with her that was her that was who osiris was originally pursuing on the moon if you remember correctly And then she kind of went quiet. Season of the Lost, we dealt with her hordes again as she was assaulting the Dreaming City, trying to get at Savathun's crystal, fought her off. And now here we are, a full year later, haven't dealt with her all year, and it seems like she's finally making her long-awaited move. Um, And I'm willing to eat some crow here. I I have believed the line that that we were getting about, you know, out. she she is not really serving the witness because she believes in these his ideology like she's actually scared i'm actually thinking it's a bit more than that i think it's a little bit more complex um i do think she is a disciple i think that's pretty obvious um some of the lore that i've been reading in game 
uh, which we're not going to get into probably hardcore until after the Christmas break. Um, when some of the seasonal stories kind of started to shape out a bit more, um, I want to get into some Ziva Wrath and some uh, Clovis Bray lore. Mm-hmm. But I think this is interesting that they're choosing her to be the one assaulting. Like, that's kind of the task she's been given by the witness, it seems like. Aramis's was to try and get the relics of Nezarak. Um, Ziva Wrath seems to be getting the Warmind's arsenal. And Callus's is going for Neomuna. So, with with all that in mind, uh, I think it's interesting that we're going back to, first off, we're going back into some of these Warmind bunkers from Season of the Worthy. I got some slight PTSD going into these. The repetition. Oh my god, dude, it, it's it's so bad. So, uh, the Europa one, uh, fine, whatever, like you're fighting your way down to Clovis, and then... I actually think that's really cool. You like dive off the side of the platform behind Clovis yeah, and there's a whole the, new area. The free that, that was are always great. That was kind of <laughs> rad to me. Uh, that's also like by far the hardest of the battlegrounds, I think. Oh yeah. With the giant fucking shrieker. And the, uh, zero, that was, that was uh, zero cover. Ba- God, zero cover. <laughs> Except for on the edges. Um, I think that, and then there's a, uh, there's an earth mission as you continue through the storyline this week that uh i don't think really takes us to a place that we've been before on earth but when you get into the bunker it's pretty much the exact same layout as yeah. the edz seraph bunker um so like seeing some of these reused um some reused assets from uh i think there, there's some stuff from uh the destiny one bunkers in here as well um yeah like the uh the what's the heavy fusion rifle um that had the, uh, the quest necrochasm no the um the big one with the laser big one with the laser o- over penetrate what is the name of that it's a rasputin sleeper heavy sleeper yeah yes so like this sleeper like f- final mission room is just where you fight mo- most of the battles in here yeah um, and i mean like th- this is another example of like we're we're reusing assets i'm completely okay with it i like it um but like kind of getting back to, i guess getting to the storyline uh very interesting that osiris has been awake for like a week and he's demanding to know what was done while he's been gone and anna is basically he like, is uh, knocking heads he she's like uh Taking i've done hands. fuck all man yeah. and he is not happy about this this he man is, like, is not happy understandably and it's funny because like we we know what happens in Lightfall, and he's just like spewing out all this like yeah there there's a city, and everyone's like you're crazy. Yeah, I I think that that was uh, that was kind of great. Um, I like that his other solution is also like let's just make a cup of tea. <laughs> um, like guys, listen, we don't have to lean into the tea of it all. Um, I it's the storyline in its early form first off we got a little bit more this week than i thought we were going to i thought it'd be like oh you do the first bunker and that's it no it's you do the first bunker you go and get some more codes and then you unlock another mission and that mission it wasn't particularly hard but i thought it was really interesting it's kind of like a stealthy mission trying to get into the bunker you're not really fighting enemies out there but you're trying to get in solo at least i did it solo you can do it with a team i chose to go it alone um, and I think that added to a bit of the the difficulty for me. But I like the idea, at least initially, on these new battlegrounds. First off, can we appreciate that this is not a six-player mode? Oh my god. <laughs> I'm getting really tired of six-player arenas, and I will take a mission like this any day. I will take battlegrounds any day, because I think that you can easily take these and put these into the Vanguard playlist. Mm-hmm. See, and like, I vote, like, I don't people i i guess never like battlegrounds i've always like like the original ones that came in chosen were weren't great but psyops ones were awesome in my, my own opinion and i like these ones th- thus far i just don't want the champions i i just don't want the champions in here <sighs> yeah um i think that that is absolutely um a point of contention um i don't hate that the champions are in here but i think the champs probably should have been saved for a master 
Yes. Um, at the same time, I think it's forcing players who don't like to equip champion mods, it's forcing you to put them on. And I kind of respect that in a twisted way because I'm really tired of running activities like Nightfalls where people don't have mods equipped and I'm trying to balance it all. See, I'm going to be real though. I'm fine with champs, but there's mods this season kind of suck. <laughs> So. Um, they're not, they're not great. I'm going to be completely honest. They're not great. Um, <clears throat> and it's specifically the unstoppable mods that are really rough right yes. now. And um, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of anti-barrier bow. I it's, think it's not. Great I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of that either, <laughs> but uh, I am a fan of anti-barrier pulse. Yes. So, uh, well, we all know I'm I'm the Pulse guy, uh, mm -hmm. which also, by the way, the new Pulse is, because we're not going to be able to talk weapons really until after the break, this new Pulse that you get is bitchin'. It's a four-round burst, right? It's a four-burst, yeah. and I got mine with Moving Target Desperado. There you go. There I'm you so excited. It's a Stasis Pulse. Wreak Havoc PvP. I would really like to get this with Headstone. Um, but this is a, this pulse feels amazing. The early impressions that I've heard from, there is somebody on my feed who has already gotten the ritual pulse for this season. Mm -hmm. And the early feedback seems to be, uh, just stick with the seasonal pulse. Like it outclasses it in every single way. And that excites me so much that I feel like I already got a God roll on this thing. Um, it's great. Uh, this is not destiny related, but I am going to interject this here because I have, I have a Twitter feed going on here. <laughs> we really like Hades here at Tower Casuals. Hades two was just announced by Super Giant Games, and I don't know if you guys know about how much time I lost to this game, but I lost a lot of it when it came to Xbox last year when it came to Game Pass. I this is an absolute day. I, if I have to build a PC to play this game in early access, I will absolutely do it. That is, like, how determined I am to play this. But, I digress. Back to Destiny. <laughs> Back to <laughs> Destiny stuff uh, before anybody comes flying in with a uh, with a Lightfall teaser for me while we're trying to talk about the season. <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, hey, stop it now. Watch this. Oh my god, dude. I will... I will freak out. Um, I, I've already gotten so so many things that I like. Uh, announced Castlevania is back. It's 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 a great day. It's a great day for me. Um, I think the idea of Osiris and Anna having to work together to bring in bring Clovis into the fr Clovis Bray into the fray. I had to say that. That is absolutely the name of tonight's Arps. episode. Clovis <laughs> Bray into the fray. Uh, I think that's that's interesting and that's a way to kind of get back to that plot line. I was talking about this uh, the other day with. Um, Oh God, who was I talking about this with? Um, I want to say it was maybe with John. And I was like, it's kind of weird that we haven't gotten back to this storyline for two years, but there really hasn't been an opportunity. I, I honestly had gotten to the point where I thought that Zivu Arath either was going to flip sides because we just don't have enough time to deal with her yeah. or... Uh, we were going to deal with her as a post-final shape threat. Um, and I mean, that's I think that's very much still on the table as a way to keep the hive in the story. Um, but I kind I, I like where we're going. I like that Zivu Arath is the one that we're kind of squaring off against. And also, like, you can't you can't fucking trust Clovis, man. Like, yeah, no. this is this is a rookie rookie mistake. Like, Osiris is screaming it. Like, do not trust this. Why are we trusting this guy? And well, I could see, uh, I could see, like, when when they go to insert like Rasputin into the a body, like, I I could see Clovis like intermingling himself in there. Yeah, so he gets like the well, one of the prevailing Rasputin. theories uh, on ta the Tower Casuals Discord is that uh, we may end up with a split personality robot. That'll part Clovis, cool. part Rasputin. Um, I I feel like the writing is like kind of on the wall that uh, Clovis is going to try and seize complete control of the body when it's ready to go. Yeah. Um, he wants to be mobile. I mean, remember, he wanted us to bring Banshee 44 to him. 
back in the lament quest and we're like oh fuck no they're like fuck you dude get yeah that. no get no way no sir no sir uh, you want if you try pulling any shit we're putting your ass into a gun <laughs> like th- this dude is absolutely going to get shoved into a gun and i'm here for it i'm waiting for it um when you look at i think where they're trying to go with the season th- this is and i think this is an interesting topic when we talk about the storyline that's playing out here, this is a storyline that I feel like is important enough to the overall narrative, but is not important enough to be its own DLC. This raises a good question, and there's been there's been some healthy debates about it this week. And the reason why I'm bringing this up now, I know Corey and I have been talking a little bit lately about seasons and do they need to be reworked in Destiny. And Grenadier Jake had a great kind of take on this earlier that i think that like it's something i've kind of been streaming for a long time which is that we need to like stop seeing seasons as like these huge important milestone releases and accept that they are what they are like these are incremental updates to a game they are not the major dlcs of the year and i'll be honest when i took that i took that approach years ago yeah. When I took that approach, I found that I was enjoying the game a bit more. Like, and that does mean that not every update is going to hit. You're you're going to get a dud. You're going to get a season of the worthy or a season of the hunt or a plunder. You're going to get those every once in a while. But oh yeah, like even though we talk about like plunder being underwhelming, I don't think it was on the level of something like worthy. It, it wasn't bad at all. We 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 just always expect like an elevating. Like, I mean, I, we w- all always expect it getting like b- b- better and better and better. And it, and in, right. in life, so sometimes it it just doesn't. I, I think it, I think it, it was kind of twofold, right? We were coming off a season that I think a lot of us, myself included, found really tedious and haunted. Like the storytelling, yeah. amazing, incredible story. Maybe the some of the best storytelling we've gotten in any of the seasons. Yeah. Coupled with one of the absolute worst activities outside of Seraph Towers. (laughs) Seraph Towers and Wrathborn Hunts. And let me tell you something. I've got some real fucking PTSD doing these Battlegrounds missions now with Wrathborn being in them. I've got some real PTSD going on over here. It's like, I'm not hearing Destiny. I'm not hearing like the choppers of Nam. I'm hearing like the fucking ships from Arms Dealer on Grandmaster over me right now. Like, that's what I'm hearing. That's it's what just, I'm hearing. I'm hearing threshers in the air. It's just whenever you see one of those big uh, hive dick looking things popping out out of the ground, it's just it's it's, it's not it's it's, it's just like oh god, here we go again. Yeah, Way like, to oh, remind no. me of like one of my least favorite events ever to do. Like God, y'all want to complain about catch crash? Let me tell you about wrathborn hunts real quick. God. Uh, but so I, I think I think that that's issue number one is that we were coming off a season that a lot of us found really tedious for the grind. And that's the only season so far I have not gotten the red borders out of because I just couldn't do it anymore. They dropped so sparsely. It was so bad. Um, Number two, I think, so there's really three things. Number two, I think we're all really fed up with the seasonal like chart model of like there's 21 boxes and all this shit, like, and you have to do them all in order to get the titles and like, I've explained my philosophy on titles. Not going to reiterate it here. I think you know. I think seasonal titles should be fairly simple to earn and not just a slog. Um, by by just casually playing, by the end of the se- season, you should be at like s- seven out of ten completed. Oh, e- by like ju- easily, just like, like playing. You should. I I would argue like even more. I think that things like that big ass board that you have to do every season. I think that kills a lot of casual players. Interest. Oh yes. Yeah. Well, and especially when they make the re- requirements like oh levelless th- this season's weapon to level twenty. Well, it's like, like I don't I don't on. really mind that as much. I think what I'm bothered by is like we had things last season where like it was like oh things were tied to seasonal challenges and like this one of the seasonal challenges in week 10 week fucking 10 by the way was go do 15 expeditions 
that yeah. and it wasn't even 15 expeditions it's 15 chess bonus chests at the end of expeditions so you can only hold so many of those things before you have to go back and do more catch crashes and it was just like in a season where we've already had to do this so many times i had literally done about 50 expeditions at this point and they yeah. wanted me to go do even more that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back for me and then they just auto complete it and we're like oh yeah you only have to earn 15 out of 21 of these things for the seal great yeah. that's how it should be going forward i should only have to get like two-thirds of these things if you really want to go the extra mile and, like you want to grind out the armor and you want to grind out all your red borders and stuff then you go and fill all of those but i don't think i think you should get a guaranteed one for finishing the story step of the week every single week and that should get you the majority of those i think how they should do seasonal titles is so you know how like when you get a title guild gu gilded it's just gold yep and we all like seeing a gold title a gold border around a gun it's just nice so they should make one where like if you complete 15 out of out of 20 you get the title but if you do all 20 you get like uh it, it doesn't need to be gold but like a like white title or something i could vibe with that i could absolutely vibe with that um i think the and i think the, like the last kind of the last thing that's like really grating on people is just unrealistic expectations you look at the seasons that we've gotten since worthy like the consensual i think worst season that they've done mm -hmm. you had arrivals then you had hunt hunt was another really down one and i think a lot of us forgave hunt because one it came packaged with uh beyond light yeah we had other things to complain about, like stasis. And three, you had the Hawkmoon storyline, you had the Hawkmoon and Crow storyline, which I think was really, really well done. Mm -hmm. So I think we were willing to like let bygones be bygones on some of that. But after that, you went on a run that had in a row chosen, Splicer, Lost, and Risen. You had probably four of the absolute strongest seasons both from a weapons standpoint and i think from an activity and a narrative standpoint yeah. like it kind of fired on all those cylinders you really had one down season in that and that was hunt if you go all the way back to arrivals that stretched for two years that was a two-year stretch where we just expected banger seasons and you had haunted which was the first one since really the pandemic started that we were like oh well this doesn't really meet our expectations the narrative was still really good but this this is fine so i think a lot of us felt fatigue going into plunder and plunder being kind of weak on two of those three fronts on the act the activity front there's only one catch crash map let's be honest yeah. so it got really yeah. old looking at that even if that is still a fun activity to me expeditions i think were a good way to reuse spaces we've already used but again the grind you had to do for the title will kill any enthusiasm you had for it and then the ruffians the, well, the fucking ruffians we've all <laughs> talked about that enough i'm not talking about ruffians anymore it's, it's over it's done with i have the title they i ordered my pin they can't hurt me anymore joe <laughs> i i think we that, are stronger than them and then they had kind of an underwhelming weapons suite i think outside of the scout and the sidearm like what were we really caring about last season yeah like i can't even remember the names of any of them re re really like it yeah it, it, just it was, like a very f forgettable suite of weapons. It, it was a fairly forgettable Except season for, for a me. few. But Volt Shot, though. Volt Shot, yeah. I mean, God, Volt Shot, Arc 3.0. Like, <laughs> yeah, Volt Shot, Arc 3.0. Like, there was some great shit that came out last season. Like, irregardless, yeah. you know, the Return of King's Fall, this and that. And, like, that's why I can't argue that it's, like, a super bad season. Oh, yeah, no. So I think a lot of expectations were had coming into this. I've already seen some try to be like, oh, my God, this season's terrible. Like, Bro, we are 48 hours into the season. You, you got to stop. You got to stop with the foolishness. But I want to read something from Joe Blackburn really fast because he he acknowledged this. I want to say it was either yesterday or on Tuesday. Um, I guess it was it was yesterday. It was yesterday right around daily reset. So on when I say yesterday, I mean Wednesday around lunchtime uh he, he wrote like five or six tweets off he goes hey just wanted to step in and say hear you loud and clear on the feedback with our current seasonal backbones the team is excited to put some more creative risk in seasonal progressions but there will be some time before the feedback catches up to the dev cycle preview 
Coming up next is Lightfall in Season 20. While Guardian Ranks and Niamuna Destination Pursuits are going to shake things up on the Seasonal Pursuit side, our major focus is reducing complexity and improving the synergy between Seasonal Pursuits and the rest of the game. Thank fucking God. This is kind of what we're talking about here. Like, this has to be sorted out because I'm really tired of, like, having to completely put, like, the expansion or, like, ongoing stuff on hold to deviate to do the Seasonal Story or vice versa. It's really jarring when I have to be taken out of a storyline I'm working on just to like be, oh, go play like five Crucible matches and stuff like that. No, it's, I want to be progressing no matter what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, like, like, that's what, that's what was nice about like the Witch Queen campaign. It was like yeah. a very immersive Well, and like campaign. Risen like, tied directly, the- that's the first time yeah. that Risen, like, or that a season tied directly into the narrative release. Yeah. And that kicked off the storyline we've told this year. And I think, it well, I wouldn't say like really kicked it off. I feel like that story kind of concluded with Haunted, right? Yep. But you can see the seeds even from all the way back in Risen that they were planting just like with the seasons in Beyond Light. They were planting those for the road to Witch Queen. We have had the road paved to Lightfall since the Vox Obscura mission uh you know we the scion predictions and things like that uh where you know we we knew that something was going to happen with callus and callus has been a pretty big part of it again it feels a little jarring that we're jump we jumped away from callus at the end of haunted to aramis and then to zivua wrath and clovis like okay and then we already know obviously callus is in lightfall and him and osiris are both huge components like Mm-hmm. okay i think part of the fun of that mystery is how do we get there for me um i want to continue sharing what joe what 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 big joe has to say um uh, other joe said yeah uh, what cooler joe said lesser what lesser joe has to say um season 21 is at the halfway mark of development the team is currently looking at ways to differentiate progression aside from having a more novel activity set up in the works um Finally, as the last bugs on Season 20 and Lightfall are wrapping up, we're hardening our 2023 plans and are working to make improvements in this space every season next year. There's still novelty, thematic variety, and new ways to progress your character coming to Destiny over the next several months. But while we work to use this feedback in our future releases, I wanted to make sure everyone knows your words are not falling on deaf ears. Um, I think that's really important because one of the things that Corey and I have often bemoaned, um, both here and privately, is we haven't had a state of the game in close to two years now by the time lightfall comes out it will have been two years since we got a state of the game and i think that's just a really really frustrating and almost upsetting place to be especially when you see things like pvp the way that they are and the feelings on seasonal progressions like at this point it may seem like i'm willing to take whatever i can get but that's that's kind of the truth so can you do me a favor yeah explain what the state of the game is because i'm I I don't really know what that is. So I state, assume it's just like a rundown of state. Book. State of the game is a blog post that was traditionally posted around the time that a expansion was either revealed or released that Luke Smith used to do, and mm-hmm. it would kind of lay out the roadmap for goals that they wanted to have going forward and like addressing specific feedback that didn't fit into like the DLC presentation. Um, mm-hmm. The last one that we got was from Joe Blackburn. Um, at the time that him and Justin Shruman were appointed as the co-directors of the game. Um, the When we found out, it was in the same post, actually, where we found out that Witch Queen was going to be delayed. It was right about the time that Season of the Chosen came out. Um, and that was when we got the infamous uh, refocusing on PvP post. Um, you know, where we got the plans for the maps, and we were like, oh, cool, like, y'all are paying attention, it's gonna take a while, okay, we get it, maps take a while to make, and Disjunction was the only thing that we got out of it. So, it's supposed to lay out, like, longer-term goals. I'm willing to forgive State of the Game a little bit more, because, um, yes, I understand that we need, we desperately need to have a conversation about PvP and Gambit, and that's the primary reason why I make the argument for a State of the Game, but I do also want to acknowledge that in the Lightfall reveal event, we got things like LFG and item loadouts talked about, and those have been often requested features uh, by the community. You know, oh, yeah. we've been using third-party tools for so long. Like, when I do LFG, for instance, uh, I do it straight from the Xbox. 
I love that that tool is built in straight into the UI. Like that's just an easier way to do it for me. I know you can do it through the Bungie app. I've never liked doing that kind of stuff. I don't like having to use third-party tools to do that. Uh, I personally don't sit by my computer, so I don't have Dim open, and I don't really like using it on my phone either. So I'm the guy who uses the Destiny 2 app to transfer guns, and everybody hates me because it takes forever. Me I am excited to have these too. features in-game, <laughs> and it's something like I have personally been rallying for, but that's great. I got some of the things I've been asking for. We need to address ritual playlists. Like str- The Strikes playlist is so stale right now. It's so stale. There's not enough rewards. And I don't think in any of the playlists, personally. Like It took us two years to build up an actual loot pool in these activities. Like It's, it's yeah, frustrating to see. I didn't see. Really it's like, think about that. Even like, Nightfalls. Like, really like You look at it, Nightfalls, this season, we're getting one new weapon, and we're getting a returning weapon in Hung Jury. Hung Jury just got taken out of the rotation like six months ago. Why yeah. is it already back? I, we don't need Hung Jury to come back. If you're going to be doing the legacy Ingrams for things that have been retired, and Nightfalls are specifically mentioned in that, why on earth is Hung Jury back as a reward? That's... It's making me think that there's no going to be no, no other way to uh, obtain Adept, unless it's like the week of... like. And I, like, I'm fine with that, because I don't think Adept should be handed out in an Ingram or at Xur. I'm totally okay with that. You should, should be able to get... It would be earned, yeah. Yeah, you should be able to get a decent roll. But if you want the best of the best roles, you're going to have to go play it the week that it's up. I can understand and respect that. When it comes to that and it comes to Trials weapons, totally get it. But, like, you look at it, we just had Comp launch. And we're going to talk about Comp a little bit later. But we just had it launch, and there's no reward for hitting max rank in Comp. There's no I special, saw that there's, there's like, no a bug reward. or something, right? Th- there's what? There's a, a bug with with Rose, correct? Uh, they they've already fixed that. As of the time of this recording, that has been fixed. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Rose was not being awarded uh, for some players when you finished your placement matches. Um. But like people who are reaching max, we've already had somebody reach max rank in comp, and there was nothing special given. That to me is like a scathing indictment of where we are. Like we kind of, we discussed this a little bit in the PvP Schwab breakdown so i I don't want to litigate old points but that's really frustrating to see even as somebody who will never reach that that's frustrating to see like there should be something special like beyond an emblem like that i i would be all for a special shader i'd be all for like i think a special shader special emblem and maybe even a special like ornament skin yeah should be like for the people who make it to that top rank what's the point if there's nothing up there (laughs) I know what I mean. And that's that. That's part of what we keep coming back to. So, like, I think when you, if you were to do a state of the game, you would need to address the state of PvP, Gambit, Ritual playlists. Seasons are kind of being addressed here, but like, I want a more concrete plan of what you plan to do for seasons, especially if we're really going. Because God, there's no way we're not going in like the last year and a half or so of Destiny Two. I would honestly think that after Final Shape, they may just cut bait and say we're doing two seasons to cut off some loose ends that tie into the Light and Dark Saga. And then we're going to kind of go content dark for like six to nine months while we cook up what will be the next step of the game. And I would not be shocked if that gets revealed to be Destiny 3. I know they've said for years they do not plan on it. I don't see any way you can continue. Because PvP right now, with this comp update, this feels like a band-aid more than anything. Yeah. And that's what I've been been seeing a lot too on Twitter. It's just like it's... It's a step in the right d- direction, but, like, a, a small step. <laughs> and several more need to be taken. Um, so the I, I do want to cut in. The Destiny 2 Lightfall trailer has aired. Um, it I'm just seeing a few screen grabs here. Um, it looks, I mean, it looks really cool. It's my Blade Runner fantasies. So... I can't, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't wait. I think this looks really, really good. Um, Kevin Conroy's final appearance as Batman will be in the Suicide Squad game. It has been confirmed uh, as well. So I, I know a lot of us really love superheroes. So um, I, I am seeing people say that uh, who were not jazzed about this new season already, who were down on the last couple, saying after this minute and a half trailer, and now I'm excited for Destiny again um so i'm excited to watch this let's see somebody says uh here in the uh 
in the comments of the actual uh, trailer. Uh, the part where they use Strand to grab the Thunder Crash is jaw dropping. Um, okay, uh, I'm yeah, here I for just... it. <laughs> there, yeah, I'm. Man, all right. While we while we talk, I'm gonna play this in the background because I I got I gotta check this out. Yeah, I think I'm gonna also do. That. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I I do. I said we weren't gonna do this, but goddamn, the aesthetic of like all the weapons, it's like season of the splicer turned up to twelve. This looks really really good. <laughs> Plus like Blade Runner. <laughs> Plus like uh, cyberpunk. <laughs> Yeah, th this is very cyberpunk esque. Uh, I'm go I'm gonna watch the I'm gonna watch this on mute, uh, so I don't have Osiris talking over you in my ears. <laughs> this, yeah, this this looks really cool. Uh, the new hunter, uh, the hunter shatter dive, whatever it is, looks really cool. The weapons look awesome. Uh, there's the strand God. looks dope as hell. <laughs> uh, yeah, I okay. I just saw the thunder crash thing. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is like my greatest fantasy come to life in this. There game. are tanks. There's fucking tanks everywhere, like futuristic tanks. Strand looks awesome. Yeah, Strand looks really, really uh, I'm awesome. very excited to see how this changes the game forever. The Tormentors look really cool. Um, God damn it. Yeah, okay. It, it's amazing how, like, Bungie's marketing can, like, make us forgive, like, so much of the shit that we see. The, the Hunter Super looks kind of cool. Um... The the cutscenes are breathtaking. Oh yeah, what, the, like, what they're showing here the, wonder, the, the space scenes. You're on. You're holding on to a ship. Um, man, I see a slight part of it. Kind of looks like um the Vex and Cabal are maybe fighting together. Um, this. see, like one scene it did, one scene it didn't. Yeah, I mean, we, we have to remember there's different collectives of the Vex. Um, like, we've had a collective of the Vex that have helped us before, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's important to remember. The scene that I want to call attention to here okay. is it is towards the end of the trailer. We are – it's right before the scenes with the Witness, but it's when our Guardian is out on uh, one of the ships, one of the big ships – Mm -hmm. And looks like they are uh, they're grabbing onto the ship as it like jumps to light speed. Um, this would not shock me if this is us leaving Soul. I've said for a little while that I really feel that we have only seen <clears throat> bits and pieces of what the campaign will actually show us. Um, oh yeah, I do not think the whole campaign takes place on Neomuna. Um, but that also may be from, like, later on in this. Uh, kind of looks like you get the Silver Surfer glider at some point. I saw that, yeah. This, <laughs> this, this cool trailer looks really bitchin'. I encourage everyone to go watch it. Very excited for it. Um, cool. If they make that a Sparrow, I will pay $30 cash. Yeah, I, I do. To the listen, designer. Like, I, I'm prepared <laughs> to open my wallet up. Um I'm a I will take out a too. small loan with my car as collateral. If with I can my car it. as collateral, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Spoken like a one Johnny would be proud of you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so okay. With all that deviation, though, with yeah, all that sorry. deviation. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you're you're good. We we got off the beaten path a while ago. Uh, just talking about like seasons and whatnot. Um, I do think that this is a little bit of a stronger start to the season than Plunder was for sure. Um. I think, oh, yeah. like, narrative-wise, we're exploring things that the community has wanted for a long time with Rasputin, with Clovis, uh, Anna's back in the fray, obviously Osiris is back in the game. Uh, excited to see where this goes over the next uh, several weeks. I'm actually kind of glad that we're going to have, like, two or three weeks off, and then we'll be coming back to talk about the narrative, because it's like, oh, yes, thank God, it'll all be sorted up. It's really that, hard... Uh, that'll be a thick episode. Am that'll I right? be a really thick episode. Thick with three, three C's. C's. Three C's, man. Uh, John kind of pointed this out in the Discord earlier. He was like, it's really hard to give impressions on a story or on weapons like 24 hours into a release. And I, I totally yeah. agree with that. The only thing I will absolutely say, one, the pulse slaps. The stasis pulse slaps. Go get it. It's awesome. The trace rifle, also awesome. Really enjoy both of those weapons. Can I tell you what sucks? This fucking SMG. 
Manticore is... I fucking hate this thing. I used it in the first mission for like a minute and a half. I, like, I used it and fine. to get 50 kills with an SMG for to like kickstart the Catalyst quest. And then I was like, mm-hmm. oh god, that's right, I have to keep using this thing. Uh, yeah. That is being th- that got thrown straight into my vault. I have no intention of touching it. If you like this gun, and I have seen people say they like it because they like fighting in the air, they like aerial combat. Cool. I felt like a fucking target just sitting out in the open. Like uh, I was getting killed in regular ass strikes using this thing. So I felt like a dork because I, oh, I was yeah. floating. But I'm a I was fucking just hunter hovering in midair. And I'm like, all right, all right what, what, what am I supposed yeah, to do? Yeah, a whole lot of good my 105 resilience <laughs> did me, let me tell you. Yeah. Uh, no, I fucking hate this thing. This thing's awful. Uh, more detailed thoughts coming when I can get them together th- uh, over the Christmas break. But God, this is in a, in a year of underwhelming exotics in the season pass. This takes the fucking cake as far as I'm concerned. This yeah. is awful. Um, I, Trespa- I, I, I made take- also, tre- trespasser yeah trespasser was, <laughs> I was about to bring it up <laughs> what was the one that we got well i can't even remember what we got in plunder honestly at this point uh delicate tomb that was good delicate tomb was yeah tell delicate yeah. tomb is fine i just personally I did had didn't cool, i didn't vibe cool with it a lot locations too. yeah i i personally didn't play with it a lot um me either but grand overture is more of a novelty than anything which i mean yeah. i'm kind of fine with like which- goofy weapons I think that is what the season pass exotic should be. I think they should be like fun. goofy fun. I mean, but then like you you put Wither Horde in the game, and that that's yeah ha, 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 had a reign for what two years now. I almost. mean, Wither Horde, I would argue, is still even with the nerf this season is probably still an essential exotic. They nerfed the shit out of it, at, and it's still great. Oh, I remember so. they <laughs> they had to they had to deliver a nerf as soon as it came out, and it was it's still been one of the top weapons since. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just real, um, this, really, really, really good. Yeah, I, I think they're they were afraid of doing that again because I mean you look at the Beyond Light pass exotics and I like wasn't too jazzed by most of those either. Um, yeah. I I think that this is like this is all fine and dandy, great. Uh, there's another discussion coming, and this, I'm kind of like previewing things that we're going to talk about in the coming weeks, and I feel I feel bad for Joe, but. We're gonna talk. We're gonna talk ritual weapons. Also, I, I want to talk about rituals because I don't know what part they play in the sandbox anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Bife had a really good take on them that like season players who have a ton of god rolls of like every type of weapon in their vault probably find these underwhelming. Like uh, I saw him and him and True Vanguard were talking about this on Twitter, and because True was the one that I saw that was like, "Oh, the pulse fucking sucks." Thing. This this thing sucks. Go just go just go use the uh, go use the stasis pulse they give you. It's so much better. And Bife's reaction to it was pretty measured. He's like, yeah, like that's disappointing if true, but he's like, I think we have to remember that like these weapons aren't like the greatest in the world, and they're not supposed to be. If we remember what Bungie said, they don't intend for these to be like the the end all, but they want them to be a viable a option choice. for most players. Like the top ten percent of players. Yeah, we're probably not going to have these in our loadouts, but you can't pretend that Null Composure didn't fucking wreck for, like, nine months. But it did not wreck in its season, though. <laughs> no, it did. Just... It, it took the season after and a special mod, but that was in how many people's loadouts for, oh God, like, a, for a while? Like, See, I am... I think... I think Plunder nailed that aspect perfectly. Mm-hmm. I think the ritual Crime weapon Mutiny is a should fucking be, blast. Sh- should be a fun se- season themed weapon. Like this this season they should have done like a serif pulse rifle cuz that doesn't exist, right? <sighs> don't don't like don't even talk to me i mean so that's what what it should always be let's let's look at some of the let's look at these rituals that we've gotten i'm gonna ignore the ones that have been sunset so things like buzzard and uh komodo edgewise we're gonna ignore all of those what even are those we're we're gonna ignore those those are from god those are from forever ago so uh let's talk about the ones that are still in the game so cry mutiny great we love it it's a novelty gun doesn't really have a whole lot of use but it's a lot of fucking fun oh yeah um where adored adored was fine solid choice it's a good pvp sniper kind of highlights what i think that a ritual weapon should be it wasn't the absolute greatest thing but it was like the probably like the third best sniper in the game at the time 
That is it perfectly was the kind fine. of thing. If you had it in your loadout, you wouldn't need to go digging around in your vault for a sniper. It's like, oh, oh I'll throw that on. Mm-hmm. I like that. I mean, and it, like it, it had Warple baked into it, which meant that it was it was fine. Triple triple tap. You had the option between triple tap and Warple. Like that was perfectly fine, especially when you have anti barrier sniper rifle. That's a great choice to go in and use, mm-hmm. especially for players who like may again may not have like the deepest bench of weapons. Uh, Reckless endangerment was the shotgun and risen. I actually did not use this because I personally like don't really care about most of the ritual weapons i was playing around with this uh the last couple of days though working on some moments of triumph stuff i actually really enjoy this i don't think it's, it's like a good shotgun it f- feels like it hits the the, the target when you get because some i'm um, shotguns like they they don't feel like they like hit the target mm-hmm. <laughs> or like half hit it. it it was good uh you had chain of command in haunted i, I think we can you know all agree chain of command it's it's fine it's fine. It's I don't not. I even remember. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's <laughs> the it's the large L, it's the LMG. Um. It, it's fine. Uh. Ascendancy. Uh, okay. I do really like ascendancy. I thought ascendancy. Ascendancy was, really was awesome. Yeah, ascendancy yeah. was awesome. It that still has its awesome. moments. Uh. Where it comes back. Of course, we've talked about null composure. And then um, the one. And I think this is what they're trying to avoid. And that's why, I like this year, maybe the ritual <laughs> weapons have felt right. a little underwhelming. Salvager Salvo. Salvager Salvo. Because Ooh. this gun is. It's still, like, it's still, like, a top of the class. It's still a top of the class weapon. Oh, so, yeah. like, I get what, like, you look at last, so you look at last year, you had Adored, Salvage Salvo, Null Composure, and Ascendancy. That's a pretty good lineup. I think that, like, oh, yeah. with the obvious outlier in Salvagers, that's a, pr- that, those are probably what, pers- what these weapons should be. And then you look at it now, and you have, you've had Chain of Command, you've had reckless endangerment you've had um we just said crime mutiny and you have the pulse that you have the pulse this season the pulse seems like uh like consensually out of those eight that's probably like the most disappointing one oh yeah and like that's that's fine think about how many fucking good pulse rifles we have in this game right now look at like this season alone we're getting like three other pulses at it we're getting an exotic pulse in two weeks i'm so excited for this that has three catalysts or four Dude, four catalysts this is crazy. like this is a love letter to me they're like josh we know that we're gonna force you to sit through a storyline you don't care about it was so bad i was making jokes that i really hope that they uh let me put rasputin into a gun just so i can vault the storyline forever um uh, imagine if at the end of this that a season the, 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 a witness just like shows up and just like cracks that uh, uh, that engram oh god dude don't tempt me bye with bye a good, do not tempt me with a good time <laughs> just gone instantly do not tempt me with a good time i would be ecstatic if that fucking happens um, I, 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 I would be a big loss too honestly like the whole arsenal oh, or whatever it, gone. well i mean it his arsenal Enemy was hands. basically like throwing paper clips at a car so <laughs> It basically did nothing. Uh, but I, I do think that a discussion that needs to happen is like, what's the role of ritual weapons going forward? Um, because I do, I do get why hardcore players would be fairly disappointed by the ones we've gotten this, this year. And I think you have every right to, I do think there, there are obviously better LMG choices than chain of command. There are obviously better heavy grenade launcher choices than crime. Mutiny. crime Mutiny is just fun to use. It's incandescent cannonballs. See, I, the thing that I love about crime mutiny is it has personality to it. Yeah, I would agree. As the only guns, like only legendary guns with static roles, they should have personality to them. Yeah, I agree. Like crime mutiny, crime mutiny does. Crime mutiny is fun. Um, And then, I mean, when reckless endangerment came out, Reese Walker was still a pretty obtainable weapon. So now yep. with Reese Walker out, like, okay, you want you want a snappy lightweight shotgun? That's that's not a horrible choice. Like, I understand why this is underwhelming for like those top ten percent players, but I think for everybody else, it's like, man, this is an opportunity to have like a gun that's maybe not meta, but like really good. Like Salvager Salvo is breach and clear is back, baby. I'm busting out salvagers this season. Yeah, I'm absolutely I'm, I'm, I'm taking salvagers. Stick with my forbearance. Yeah, I mean like... that's fair. I'm not. I'm not a big. I'm not a big um, grenade launcher guy, uh, breach loader. But I did really like salvagers. I got decent at using it, so I really like using it now. 
Um, yeah, I mean, God, what what else is this season bringing us? So we found out that we are getting. It's not really a secret mission because they're telling us about it, but it's an it's a mission that's going to evolve over time uh, on an orbital platform above Earth. Which no idea why we're just now finding out about this and now. It feels a little random, but whatever. Exactly. <laughs> I'll let bygones be bygones. You're well, well, the the Gaul uh, didn't the... blast us out of the fucking sky when he showed up. <laughs> yeah, like, I was just like, let's leave that. But <sighs> uh, I, I mean, the the uh, the person who runs uh, Destiny's t- t- Twitter account did mm-hmm. to tell us that that Zebra Wrath is back. So, I mean, anything can happen now. It's true. L- literally Twitter anything can happen. Um, I did laugh really hard when I saw some people going, "Oh my god, this is going to be this, this, this is this is the Morning Star station." I'm like, "No, the Morning Star is scattered across the planet of Europa. Um, like this is absolutely not <laughs> what you think it is. The space station from Deepstone was in fact destroyed by us in the raid. Yeah, so we, we plummeted it into the ground." <laughs> Dude, it just... Do people forget that like we took it down and we inserted Tehenix into a shank body? Yeah, t- tough, tough our, look for our my actions. Guy. Tough, tough look for my guy. By the um, way, is the Watcher in that spire Tehenix? Oh God, I swear to I swear to fucking God, if it's somebody that we've seen before, I'm gonna scream. Um, I do find it curious that. This is going that the the dungeon is going to be on Mars. We've already talked about that. I uh, I like that it's kind of, that at least makes a little bit more sense with it being a war mine season. Um, I don't entirely hate it. I'm excited for this uh this evolving mission. I'm excited to see what the dungeon is like. We do know that when the Seraph platform opens up, Seraph Station, whatever the fuck it's called, opens up. Um, on the 20th of December, which great move to put it out the week of Christmas, by the way. Nothing can possibly <laughs> go wrong with this. Um, personally, I would have held this until after the first of the year, but I don't work at Bungie. Um, or or just don't mention it at all and then dro- drop it on us. I, 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 think they, I think they had to mention this one. I think they really, truly had to come out and mention this because otherwise people would have been like, this is it for the season, really. Yeah. Um, it, it's a catch-22. It would have been found in the files anyways. We did actually get an explanation about why they can't do secret missions. Uh, it's that they're choosing not to because the level of encryption that they have to try and do is just, like, out of this world because people data months, mine everything. Yeah. So basically the data miners are to blame. Go blame a few of the guys that spoiled Lightfall for everybody the week it, came, uh, the week it got announced. Those are the guys you can go blame. Destiny um, two leaks. We're t- talking about you. Yeah, man. I'm. JK, JK. I've yeah. like hard swung around to the stance of uh, yank the API codes of like literally everybody that's not dim and maybe a couple of other developers. Like yeah. genuinely, just yank everybody's because nothing good can come out. I mean, dude, we had people who were flaunting that they had that they were data mining the api flaunting around dun- the dungeon name and the title and the the armor and everything else and it's just like guys come on like can y'all not data mine shit on the first day like if you if you want to go data mine eververse or like what days the exotics are going to be available like i'm cool with things like that because those are things that genuinely help everyone bungie doesn't seem to have a problem what i think they have a problem with is y'all going and sharing images of everything you're going to fucking earn in game I understand that it's, oh, four days away, okay, fine, Josh, you're overreacting. Cool, great. I would have loved for them to have and been able to encrypt the Seraph platform thing as a yeah. mission, and you just log in kind of like with Presage, you log in, and boom, it's there. Yeah. I would have loved I, that. I just, like, I, I would have loved it, too. I, like, I hate that I know what, like, the light fall fall rate is gonna be i hate i know that already yeah i'm not i'm not a fan of that either uh really really annoyed by that um there i wish it was secretive yeah i it's just like because people can't help leaking shit and it makes it really hard to avoid it sometimes destiny twitter likes to share this shit left and right (sighs) Um, it's largely why I've unfollowed all but just a handful of people in the community at this point. Um, I tend to just like kind of keep within our own discord and that's that. 
at that point it's my fault if i go look at the spoiler channel um but so like cats out of the bag like joe and i have definitely seen what the armor and the weapons look like what the exotic bow is um yes i just told you it's an exotic bow sue me the dungeon Leak. is available when you're listening to this it's <laughs> yeah, available the dungeon's like, already out yeah i'm i'm like oh. <laughs> completely fine with this i'm not actually like spoiling anything for you if you are listening to this right as it posts and you haven't been able to do the dungeon i'm really sorry you can come yell at me in discord um i think that this is kind of a cool approach to this though like we're going back to we're going back to mars as much as i don't like mars we're clearly dealing with the war mine systems so i am curious to see what's in there um I, I don't know. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how this ties in the overall narrative because that's the, one of the things I really liked about Shattered Throne and about Pit of Heresy and Duality is that they all told stories. Grasp of Avarice was like a fun little like side thing that didn't matter, and Prophecy still don't think we really grasped what Prophecy was about. Um, that was just some wacky shit. Um, I'm that was just like the the nine gave the guardians some acid and we're, we're like pretty Come much over. like here here's space drugs uh, you smoked a peace pipe with drifter for too long um <laughs> i'm curious to see how this ties into the overall season because i think that's part of the problem with throwing a dungeon out four days into the season is how can you tie that into the seasonal narrative and i think duality did that really well with oh you're inside callus's mind you're mm-hmm. you're performing a severance on callus that was kind of cool and i think that made it that was an interesting twist that you fight his image of Keitel. Um, yeah, like that was a really fun experience. That was a cool twist. Like, I really we, enjoyed that. We got that. to fight a friendly person. So I want to know how this ties in. I have to think that this is like the first step to like unlocking uh, the Seraph platform. Um, yeah. But also like, how is this going to change the game? Uh, I saw a theory that like, oh, maybe this means we'll get Mars as a patrol destination. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's not going to happen because we would already know if that was going to happen. It literally because of fucking data miners we would already know um i would well love... so there are uh three pieces of armor that there are three pieces of armor out yet. you're absolutely right um i've Possibly. been kind of waiting to see when those are going to come into play i have a feeling because they didn't talk about them in any twabs they're not in any marketing or anything i kind of wonder if they're going to be held for like the master dungeon maybe i think it would be really or cool. platform see that that would be something interesting they could do in like a dungeon instead of doing an exotic weapon do an armor piece for each class that is like special i would like that but i think that that would kind of kill the replayability of it um the second I... that you get a god roll on it you're never going to touch it again that's true, I guess. And I know the same can be said about the exotic weapon, too. Um, I guess I'm just trying to play like a little bit of devil's advocate. I would like to see a shakeup to how the exotic armor is dealt out, though. Like, I think that if it's been in the Lost Sectors for four seasons, it needs to be rotated out. Yeah. Um, I think it's absurd that things that were put in the Lost Sectors back in Chosen are still in the Lost Sectors. Or we need a way to focus it. Yeah, uh, do, like, so, I mean, focusing, you absolutely need, because, again... Like, the horror stories, like, I mean, I've done it myself. I've done, like, 25 runs of the Lost Sector. I'd have come away with one piece of armor. and it One piece, piece that, that I you needed. didn't want that has a terrible role on it. has it. a terrible role. Like, there, there's, there's got to be there's got to be some improvement on that end. Um, I, again, like, topics topics for another time, I guess. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts on, like, this opening week of the season uh, before we jump into uh, a few other little topics? And we got a bunch of questions tonight, too. Um, I thought it was a strong start, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm glad that they p- put out two Battlegrounds at launch. Yeah, big, big, big fan of the playlist is already there do. right away. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I absolutely love that they did the, uh, the, they, they cap your, your, your light five uh, under the enemy. It doesn't make it like super hard. It just makes you, you have to play a little more conservatively i i enjoy that this feels like more of a challenge than just like yeah. going through the motions and to be fair i felt that way about the psyops also the psyops yeah. were also a little bit of a challenge when they first came out and especially when you go do the master ones they were definitely a oh, challenge. Yeah. i enjoy that because one of the things that we've praised about the witch queen is and like the overall year of content is enemy density yes and it feels really good like 
when you have six people, enemy density doesn't feel like as grand. But when it's only three, you feel it. And mm-hmm. you know, we were talking about the <laughs> the mission on Europa. That I think highlights this kind of perfectly, like in a way that we haven't probably seen since the legendary Witch Queen campaign. And just yeah. the it feels like just an absolute onslaught of enemies spawning in. You're constantly breaking shield. I do appreciate that it's not a darkness zone though. Yes. Um, I think that <laughs> is forgiving. There are not champs in that specific boss room all either, which is really nice. Yeah. Um I I like where they're going. I want to see where the story ultimately ends up because I mean it can't be any worse than uh us having tea right even if osiris's first advice to anna is make a cup of tea um joe in addition to this we also got moments of triumph on tuesday moments of triumph started up i love blogging and finding out i already earned my t-shirt that was fun (laughs) yeah Um, love when that happens and i i kind of looked at everything else and i was like damn i really just like i'm I'm not gonna (laughs) buy the seal i don't care about the title Yes, I'm skipping a seal, everybody. I think this. I think the design looks okay, but and like if I get there naturally, I get there naturally. I'm not gonna like go out of my way to like go buy this. I like that there is another custom customizable option for the shirt. You can get a raid pat, a raid and dungeon patch. I don't like that said patch is fifteen bucks each. Each the patch is fifteen dollars. Oh my god. Plus shipping from the Bungie store, so you know that's going to be expensive because of whatever... So it's going to be about $200, Dude, huh? it's fucking <laughs> ludicrous. So let me tell you about the saga with the Bungie store that I'm currently in right now. I bought the Moments of Triumph shirt last year, pretty much on, like, the last day you possibly could. Because I tend to, like, buy them towards the end of seasons so that I, I can get, like, double emblems or something. Because, like, there's almost mm-hmm, always yeah. a promotional thing that goes on. Or I try to buy them, like, during the Christmas event or, like... Things like like the Black Friday event, etc. I try to buy them so I have extra emblems to give away. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at the I, I was looking at my orders a few months ago, and I realized I still hadn't gotten my shirt. And they told me four to six months, and I was like, okay, I'm coming up on six months. And it was right about the time my apartment flooded. They emailed me like the next day, and we're like, yeah, we're expecting this to leave uh, to leave the warehouse in September and be shipped to you. And I was like, oh shit, I need to update all my shipping information. So like. All my orders, like all my seal pins and stuff. I had two seal pins show up a couple weeks ago. I had my Valid Disciple one, and I had my um, one of my seasonal ones show up. I think my my Risen seal both showed up. Mm-hmm. Or my Witch Queen. It was my Witch Queen uh, campaign seal. Excuse me. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Okay. And I didn't think anything of the t-shirt. And then I got an email from them a couple days ago saying, so we got your shirt. But the quality was really, really bad on this batch. So we're sending them back to the printer. The printer is going to have to reprint them. It's going to take another six to eight weeks to get your shirt. But, and this is a first, we are going to refund your shirt price and your shipping and send it to you free of charge because it's taken so long. I'm like, well, thanks, because I might get this shirt before Lightfall comes out. I might receive this before then. Josh will be... 43 years old when he gets the shirt i'm just like god damn like i tend to like the moments of triumph shirts i didn't even get mine like personalized or anything i just ordered the regular ass t-shirt i can't believe it's taking this long um so i was a little hesitant on like oh, i don't think i'm gonna buy a moments of triumph shirt and then i saw it and i was like damn this actually looks kind of cool this year i actually really like they this always one. get you <laughs> they always like, get me i don't want to spend so so much on this but it looks awesome so click it looks awesome. I like the idea that um, yeah, they, they, they talk here in the 12 also. You get a special emblem also if you get the shirt this year, which I think is kind of cool. Um, you get the same mm. logo that is on the shirt um, on the emblem. It is worth noting that tomorrow with the... Today with the... God, I keep saying tomorrow. Today with the dungeon coming out, uh, there will be other rewards for the today season. Today for you added. guys. Yesterday for... There for is a Tex Josh. Machina Henley that will be in the store. And let me tell you something. I will absolutely be buying that shirt. I haven't even seen it, and I will be buying that shirt. <laughs> I am a sucker for long sleeve shirts. Uh, I, even though I live in Texas, I'm a sucker for them. I like wearing long sleeve and three quarter shirts with shorts like year round. So I'll absolutely be getting in on this. Um, long, 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 see, see, I'm strange. I love long sleeve shirts and like sweatshirts, but like rolling up this 
just sleeps. Yeah, I, I do that habitually too, uh, especially when I'm working. But I keep my apartment. Really I know it nice ruins them, but like, I like it. It, it definitely <laughs> stretches them out. That's for sure. Um, ruins the arms. <laughs> it definitely ruins the arms. Uh, what, what else was I? Get, what, what else were, were we going to try to get to tonight? Um, well, while I'm trying to remember, we're going to shift over to questions because I'm going to, I don't want to like sit here and stagnate on this all night. Uh, questions, question time, question time. Probably no work corner tonight, frankly, because nothing's updated in the API. Everything can get leaked, but we can't get lore updated in the API. It's really frustrating. Um, so first off, Joe, I need your answer to the question that you asked last or that we got asked last week. I don't, I think you were the one who asked it. The, the class question? Class and subclass. Okay. Yes. I need so, you to create a class and a subclass. By class, I meant like warlock, hunter, titan, and then. Oh, God. Class. It's even worse than I thought. <laughs> I, I I do have, have an answer for it, though, but it's kind of long. Go for it. Up to, to you. Nope. Okay, the floor okay, is yours. So the class that I, I made is called Siren. Okay. It's an arc sub subclass called so Song Weaver, and uh, the super is you emit the song of the siren, disorienting nearby enemies and blinding them temper temporarily. Do increased di damage to serenaded targets and acquire stacks of ability regen potency based on the number of targets serenaded. So a nightmare in PvP. But okay, there you go. <laughs> well, there you have it, uh, Bungie. You may need to get a get at Joe. I don't know if we can handle any more terrorism in PvP, though. <laughs> that would be a nightmare in PvP, but fun in PvE. Yeah, that would be a blast. Of, and I think like that's part of this is like it would be a lot more fun if we didn't have to balance between two different things. Yeah. Um, I think that's slightly, ever so slightly frustrating. Um, but hey, it's question time, man. Questions, questions, questions. Whew. Oh Tiger Jesus 64 writes in, what is something you played in your break from Destiny that you would add in Destiny? So what is an element from a game that we played when we're taking breaks from this game that we would add in here? You go first. I'll, uh, I'll um, think. So this kind of goes along with a question that we're going to be asked later on. Um, I would absolutely... I've played a lot of Fortnite. I would absolutely add more armor sets and more skins. Um, I would shake it up in the season pass because it's really... I don't want to say it's frustrating, but it has kind of gotten a little stale that like, oh, we get a lot of shit handed to us that is in game already that is like materials and whatnot and yeah, currencies yeah. and like i'm not sitting here saying like oh you have to give us like seven armor sets in the past like no not at all um i think some i actually think i would argue for more like weapon skins like maybe some of the exotic skins that you put in eververse like one or two of those could go into the past each season um mm -hmm. I don't know, like, I look at this season and I go, oh, so, like, I personally think that the, like, the solar arc and void ornaments should have gone into the past, additionally. Um, especially when you look at, oh, last season we bumped the arc armor for the Fortnite stuff, and then this season we have the arc armor in there, we have the Assassin's Creed set, we're gonna have the Dawning set, like, where, where does it, st like, where does this end? You know, that's three sets you're going to have in Eververse in the span of two weeks because Dawning starts on Tuesday. I think that's yeah. a little, I think that's a little silly. Um, I think you could stand to add some of this stuff, not just to this, but like if you included, you can still sell like the armor, like the, but let's take for instance, the mech armor that we just had for Festival of the Lost. You, if you took that and put that in the event card and like, that was part of it, I would probably buy the event card more because I'd see it as, oh, I'm buying the armor already, but I'm going to get a few extra cosmetics for like three more bucks. Yeah, that's what I didn't really get about the event card. I think like that the other thing you need to do is it. we, we got to like drastically reduce the cost in the shop. 
Um, yeah. I've played some other games, not not Fortnite, but I've played a few other games where I, I feel like the prices are a little bit more fair. Um, I understand that part of the deal is like looking cool and things like that, but we, we got to reduce the cost. And especially on the, I would, I would say the other thing that I'd like to take from Fortnite is make the emotes better because the emotes and destiny are super underwhelming after you play Fortnite. I'm not saying yeah. like I need like licensed music and I don't want to see like a bunch of Titans hitting the gritty in comp, <laughs> but I Why need, not? I need something better. Um, yeah. the emotes were cool when that's all that we really had, but like, I feel almost every other game does emotes better now. Yeah. We also need a wheel <laughs> instead God, of I'm so tired of asking for four. the emote. I'm so tired of asking for an emote wheel at this point. It's not even funny. Uh, this, this was a conversation we were having back in Curse of Osiris. I, I'm, I'm over having the emote wheel discussion, frankly. Joe, what would I mean, you like, take from a game you that you played? When you have 35, it's just like, what should happen? Um, See, the problem is, I don't play much else besides Destiny. I've been playing a lot of Modern Warfare. Okay. And what I liked about that campaign itself is uh, it seemed like each mission, they went for like a different style of game. So like there was a, a mission that, that was like heavily in influenced by like hitman mm -hmm. i'd like to see uh some more like one-off strikes where it's like different kind of things like that and also party games party In games okay D D so so, so like me. gun game like okay. I, okay exotic gun gun game would be a slam dunk in my my, my own opinion yeah, I'm. I I would like that. I would actually love a big mode like uh, Ground War. Um, oh, yes. It's like a battlefield style mode. I don't know how you would do that without frames dropping drastically and like power balances and stuff. But I think that could be really fun. Well, um, they they kind of did it in De Destiny One, just on like a smaller scale. Yeah, we had we had combined arms, and I yeah. still don't know how I feel about that ultimately. Um. Oh uh, man, yeah. yeah. No, there, there. Those are. I think those are some some pretty solid suggestions. Um, oh god, god damn it! I hate when my phone locks on me. Um, Nerd generalist asks next exotic that you think should get the nerf actual IRL nerf treatment. Corey and I kind of played with this idea over the summer when the when the nerf Gallarhorn went up for order. Uh, and I think back then, that's when we decided on the Divinity Super Soaker. I that, that's, a, that's a good one. So I think I would I would love to see. There's a couple different ones. I think because Nerf is no longer just guns, you could make a La Monarch one that would be really cool. You do La Monarch or like dope. Tikus, just because of like the absurd size of it. Um, if they made Tikus that could shoot three arrows, that'd be really cool. That would be awesome. Uh, that's where I'm getting at. Quicksilver Storm, I think, would probably be my pick because of the alternate oh. fire modes. You could have one that Rocket shoots, Rocket like, Rocket. the little, like, standard nerf bullets. You could have a mode that, like, when you, like, I don't know, turn the barrel or something, it shoots, quote, grenades, and it's, like, the big circular nerf pellets. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you could have, like, one big one that's, like, the missile. You could have a really cool. You could really have a really cool mode with that. I think ops out the mag and it, that thing would absolutely cost like three hundred dollars, oh, but it would be really fun. Josh would 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 pay it, Bungie. So I would not get, get to work. <laughs> I would not. I have a limit to what I'm willing to pay for. Um, the Gallarhorn literally is only because it's Gallarhorn at the top. Yeah, yeah. Gallarhorn is like it's one iconic. One of those. Like, it's iconic. Yeah. Um, I have regretted forever not buying the McFarlane Iron Gallarhorn from years ago, and this was the only way to remedy that. If I owned that, I probably would not be buying the Nerf one. I'm going to be totally real with everybody. Yeah. Well, there. The, I don't know if you've seen that one dude on Twitter, but he. Uh, I think think his name is like Meta Guns. Yeah, I follow Meta Guns. And yeah, and like I am, I am. I, whenever I, I got the disposable income, I'm buying something. Else. I really want to buy an Osteostriga from him. They look amazing. <laughs> uh, Just, Joe, what yeah. would you make into a Nerf gun from this game? 
Dead Man's Tale, baby. Dead Man's Tale. Okay, yeah, gotta gotta agree. I, gotta I think agree. a lever action ner- ner- nerf gun would change the, the game. Like, oh, it would absolutely. Wreck. I think that I would, would love be it. amazing. I would absolutely love it. Um, and imagine a nerf dead Dead Man's Tale ornament too. Oh, I'm imagining it. It's gonna be. <laughs> it's gonna look goofy as all hell. Um, and I love it. Zao Ambrosia asks, if you could change the seasonal model, what would you do? I feel like we talked about this earlier um, in the show. Uh, just, I think we would make, kind of make it like more streamlined in terms of the upgrades. Uh, make it a little bit easier to kind of understand and get through the season, especially. And I would do a more less health. filler. Yeah, less filler. I think I would do a more healthy balance of six player versus three player activities. Um, yeah. I kind of prefer the smaller activities that can be reused in a playlist. Like when the year is over, you can still use some of those activities still um, and still tell some of the stories. Like, I I think that would be fairly healthy to do. Um, I I, I don't know. I don't know. I I feel like we we talked about that. We talked about like having like some kind of like goofier seasonal themed weapons to what you got here, Joe. I don't really see like that's the thing like I don't have a problem with a seasonal model I just think they need to innovate and like sh- shake the, the, the things up a little, a little more often. I I, w- I would agree. I would Which agree. I I know like is easier said than done, but like if you eat a burger every day, you're gonna get t- you're gonna n- never ever want a burger again in like a month <laughs> like uh like it's if you keep at the same thing every week and like all of the uh the seasonal upgrade tracks for for the past like two years have looked bit borderline identical exactly exactly so it's just like it's it's getting a little tiring like i think this season they've mixed in a few more missions which i like mm-hmm um yeah and uh just just less uh never again do i want to do an expedition (laughs) let's just just say that (laughs) never again will we do an expedition i am not a fan uh sal also asks he has a non-destiny question top five pizzas i'm gonna take this as like top five like pizza styles or toppings, I'm not going to take this as, like, chains. Because then you get into, yeah. like, personal and, like, local joints and stuff. And that Which, like, gets hard. no one really eats consistently at a chain. Like, no. the local spots are always, like... Yeah, the, the local spots are where it's at. I mean, like, I could rattle off, like, four local places for you that I've had oh, yeah. before. <laughs> that would absolutely be my top. Like, my favorite meal I've ever had was pizza. So. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Pequod's in Chicago, baby um so okay if we're doing if we're doing styles then i'm gonna assume that this is like deep dish thin crust detroit style things like that um i it could could be style or it could be toppings so if if it's toppings okay so yeah this is kind of hard for me okay so so i don't think i could name five pizza styles i could because i live with the pizza queen (laughs) But um, pizza queen, <laughs> yes, my, my girlfriend loves pizza. That is her favorite thing on earth is pizza. Um, in terms, okay, so to, uh, we're we're gonna think this is pizza toppings. If it's wrongs out, write it right back in. Tell me, and I will talk about pizza again next week. Um, my favorite toppings on pizza. So I'm gonna uh, buffalo chicken. Ooh, buffalo chicken's fucking that. delicious on pizza. Oh yeah. <laughs> really like any kind of chicken buffalo chicken barbecue chicken i just prefer the spice i like the spicy like on the cheese oh, it's great um i like that um i love 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 olives um i if i have an excuse to put olives on something i'm gonna put them on black olives green olives it doesn't matter i'm gonna put them on there is a local pizza joint that will put both of those on the pizza for me and it's just heaven mm-hmm. on earth um i'm a big fan of sweet and savory so this is kind of cheating but canadian bacon and pineapple together love it absolutely love it sprinkle a little bit of salt on there and it's absolutely incredible 
Um, yeah, this is a a a, a, a Hawaiian pizza friendly podcast lineup. So, have you ever had stuff. Hawaiian pizza with barbecue chicken on it? I have not, but I think that, that would be amazing. I'm yeah, not so. a very religious person, but that is like the closest to God that I think I've ever felt. That <laughs> like that almost convinced me that there is some great power out there that needs to be a new tower casuals merch <laughs> merch idea this the, pizza made me believe this pizza made me believe in god um <laughs> and then i mean uh for Corey, my, get on it <laughs> for, for my last one i mean you 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 well i guess i've got two more i like a good supreme i like a good supreme, supreme pizza Supreme's good Big, big fan of everything on there, except for, like, mushrooms. I always have to take mushrooms off. I hate mushrooms. And I like cooking with them. I don't like eating them. And then, last but not least, I mean, you can't go wrong with the classic pepperoni, sausage, and extra cheese. Ooh, that, that's a good one. You can't now, go, you're, now you're talking You can't mileage. go wrong with it. Joe, give me your top five pizzas. All right, so first up, classic pe- pepperoni and fr- 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 fresh garlic. Okay. Okay, I can dig it. Second, I like a nice uh, pepperoni and sausage. Yep. Yeah. I mean, come on. We this is a safe place for pepperoni and sausage. Exactly. Good old sausage. Um. Third, I I uh, I'm a, a big fan. Joe likes a good 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 sausage, guys. The sausage, the Aki way. Um. So, third, we got uh, honestly, I'm a I'm a plain pizza guy. I like just plain plain, plain cheese be hidden. It depends on where it's from for me. Not all yes. cheese pizza is created equal. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I'm just saying. There there it's are really not, so but... <laughs> some that I'm Old like. statement here. Uh, listen, so th- I don't like Papa John's. I'm not a big fan of cheese pe- or of uh, chain pizza, but Papa yeah. John's cheese pizza after it's been in the fridge all night sprinkle again sprinkle like a little bit of salt or like some seasoning salt on it is fucking phenomenal maybe that's okay. the alcohol talking but it's really good another another thing are you a fan of cold cold pizza yes cold pizza is delicious who doesn't like cold pizza what kind of neanderthal a lot, a doesn't lot like of cold people. pizza a lot of people and it's concerning um and then la- la- last two, uh, I've recently become a big fan of uh, this one place by me does um, ch- chicken wing pizza. Okay, okay, yeah, and yeah, yeah. It, it's like actual like wing bits on it, so, 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 so it's like not, uh, uh, nice and soft. Okay. It's good. And then, um, huh, uh, talk taco pizza taco pizza okay so what walk me through taco Taco pizza pizza. so taco pizza you just cook like a pizza you don't don't put sauce on it Mm -hmm. unless you you want to but don't um we got the dough we got the the cheese you could sprinkle some 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 cheddar on there some mozzarella okay some three 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 cheese maybe i don't know and then, so you bake that with uh, taco meat on it. Okay. And then you take it out. And, and to be you clear, you're like... doing this on pizza dough. Yes. Okay. So, so, so pizza dough, sprinkled cheese. Um, you, like, cook the taco meat first. Then you sprinkle that on there. Okay. Bake it. 350. No, no I'm just kidding. Uh, you, you, ba- you bake it. And then uh, you take it out. Then you put lettuce, tomato, some dollops of sour cream. If you want to get freaky, you can crunch up some – you hate sour cream, Josh? Come on. Oh, man. Grow up. (laughs) Listen, (laughs) it it was a running joke on my very first podcast back when Corey met me how much I did not like sour cream. And uh, that joke has haunted me for years. I've gotten around to like I can have sour cream on certain things, but if I can visibly mm-hmm. see the sour cream, I like won't touch it. Well, what kind of guy doesn't like a little s- 
sour cream every now now and again. Am I right? Me. <laughs> um, uh, I like it at approximately there. There are things like you can cook with it, and I'm totally fine because I can't see it. But if I can see it, it's a problem. The only thing I can eat it in that I can like, if I visibly see it, I won't just like immediately like throw my food away. Is if it is in a crunch wrap supreme. Yeah, because then it like binds w- 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 with everything. It, it it's kind of like the glue. Like it mixes in with like yeah. the nacho cheese and stuff. And I feel yeah. like okay, I'm already probably gonna get sick from this anyways. What's a little sour cream? <laughs> Um, it's when I have the chunks of tomato that bother me there, but that's a whole nother pot. Um, so taco, <laughs> taco pizza, man, that kind of reminds me of a, pl- it's good. It sounds, sound, sounds strange. It, it's, every time I sounds did, borderline did, disgusting, did, I'm going to be describe honest. it. It's you gotta understand. So I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna float <laughs> something by you. And this is a pizza I had when I, I haven't seen it since I was in high school, but when I was younger, I was a connoisseur of CeCe's pizza. Okay. Mm. My dad would take me and my buddies there. If I had a friend that stayed the night. Five bucks? He would, yeah, he would take us there. That was, no, it was three ninety nine. dollars CeCe's really? Pizza, all you can eat for three ninety nine. That was their fucking commercial jingle. How were they making money? I don't like, know. I am convinced to this day that the local CeCe's Pizza in South Arlington, Texas, was a front for money laundering. I'm convinced. Probably, because that, like, that was that the commercial. Even buy a slice. It was CC's now Pizza, all you can eat for only three ninety nine. It was fucking great. It wove itself into my brain. Like, that's a core memory right there, man. But the dude who ran the shop made a macaroni and cheese pizza. And let me tell you something. I ate this on a, I ate this on a dare one night, okay? Because I was absolutely convinced there is no way that this can be good that shit was absolutely was delicious amazing. that shit was delicious i told you but i have never and i mean never had a reaction to pizza the way i did that i i was afraid to go back to cc's after eating that because that was so <laughs> delicious but the way that people talk about taco bell that was my experience with the macaroni and cheese pizza from cc's it hurt so good <laughs> It hurts so good. It hurts so good. But macaroni God, and cheese pizza. Josh kids. with the taglines tonight. Josh with the taglines tonight. All right. Our next question. Ronnie writes in. Are we spoiled thinking that seasons should bring uh, game changing things instead of looking at them as bonus DLC in between bigger expansions? Um, yeah, we we are. As a community, I think we're we're a little spoiled. Uh, again, I think we touched on this throughout the episode. Um. The, they should be seen as, like, I think supplemental stories and, like, building up to the next expansion. Um, I find it really interesting that we've largely kept the storylines of Keitel and Mithrax to the seasonal stories and, like, everything else kind of gets dealt with in expansions. I find that intriguing because they've made it essential for the seasons to be played now. You didn't feel like they were essential during Shadowkeep because Undying sucked and Worthy sucked. Because they weren't. Dawn, <laughs> like in Dawn was cool, though. Like, Dawn, we yeah. saved Saint. But you, there was a certain point where up until the pyramid, sh- and up until, like, the pyramid ships and Space Doritos showed up at the beginning of June uh, of 2020, you could be forgiven for thinking that these seasons are not essential. Hell, even after Hunt, I think some of us were like, man, was Arrivals like a one-off? And then that's when you got chosen splice or loss and risen like all in a row um i think they're telling better and better stories but i think when you look at them i don't know what i just knocked over um i think that you have to remember that you are paying ten dollars for this you are paying ten dollars for this plus your seasonal rewards so an armor set alone if you were to buy the armor ornament set we all like the reaper set from Season of the Haunted, correct? I'm going to assume yeah. that we all liked it oh, because yeah. it was dope as fuck. That would cost you $15. That would cost you $5 more than you paid for that season, which gave you everything on that rewards track. So it gave you that. It gave you a couple emotes, a ship, a ghost. Um, you get a finisher in there. Like, you're already, if you're looking at the monetary value of that, you're already looking at, like, over 30 bucks, right? You are getting... The seasonal storyline. You are getting access to the activities. You you used to get the dungeons included. The dungeons are no longer included, so I can't use that as a selling point. But you, you get what I'm saying? Like, you are getting all of this for... 
you're, you're getting all this for 10 bucks. It's like, I think people start to for, forget how much things cost because a lot yeah. of us buy it all at the start of the year. Yep. But like, if, if you think about every other game that, that has like a battle pass of some sort, it's $10. And those are like purely cosmetic. Yeah, and I mean, like, so something like, for, we talked about Fortnite earlier, and how we'd like yeah. to see more skins like Fortnite. I also acknowledge that Fortnite is the only thing that Epic really makes outside of Unreal Engine, is the only mm-hmm. gaming venture that they really have. They have other studios that they've acquired that make games, but it's the only thing Epic themselves makes. They have an entire team, probably of like hundreds of people, that make skins and emotes and things like that. And that's great. It's the, also the biggest game in the world. You want you want to see some real shit? Go look at like the first few seasons of Fortnite and look at how awful those cosmetics were. It took them a while oh, yeah. to hit their stride. And I think we can all still agree that for the most part, their best stuff are the collaborations that they do. Like there's some banger stuff in the Battle Pass, but usually I see like two, three skins in the Battle Pass I want to use. And then there's the licensed skins that are really fun, like Mando or Spider-Gwen or, you know, th- this season it's uh, Geralt. You know, Geralt's going to yeah. be a part of it. Uh, Doom Slayer is part of it. You know, we know My Hero Academia is coming. I'm oh, obviously I'm super excited about that. Um, if you did not hear me squeal last weekend at, on a Saturday afternoon, seeing that My Hero Academia was coming to Fortnite, then you don't know me. Um, <laughs> I think things like that are really cool. They wouldn't fit in a game like Destiny, and I think that's why I get bothered by things like the Assassin's Creed stuff. That's like completely optional because like. I think we all also liked, for the most part, the Fortnite armor last season that came to Destiny. And it was oh, like, yeah. damn, why can this armor look cool and we can't get any cool-looking wacky shit like this in Destiny? This is really frustrating. Um, yeah. So I do think that there is a bit of entitlement on the part of the community. When you look at what you're getting for 10 bucks, I don't think it's bad at all. Like, if they did any more, I see people saying, like, oh, we should have as much content as, like, something like Warmind did, like, Man, Warmind was also, like, a $25 expansion. Yeah, yeah. I have said in the past that I'd be willing to move to two two mini expansions a year. Like, say you had Witch Queen, and then you had a drop a few months, you had a drop, like, three or four months later, that was drop number one, and then you had another one, like, four months after that, that was drop number two. I would be okay with that stuff if it didn't sunset. I'd be okay with that. And, like, maybe in the middle of drop number one is when you get the reprise to raid for the year. Uh, exactly six months after this, after the game came out. I would be fine with something like that if it still cost me, like, the 40 bucks. I would be yeah. okay with a change like that. Um, but you would have to drastically step up in-game rewards then. Like, you would have to... We'd have to get new uh, core gameplay sets for each activity we would need to get like i'm talking like every time that uh that one of those mini expansions came out we would need not just the mini expansions but the main expansions we would need new sets for vanguard crucible gambit trials iron banner um whatever the fuck else you want to think of the seasons like you would need to have that like i would be okay with shifting to that with the understanding that okay you're you're not going to get updates as frequently you might not get title updates as often either and that can lead to some long-term frustration but if that's what you have to do to like focus your energy post final shape then i would be all for it i think that's one way you could shake that up and maybe that would like get the entitlement off just a little bit um and make people think like oh man like there's like 20 25 weapons to pursue yeah because you've got them all at once instead of spread out over two seasons you nitwits yeah yeah i think that would be like if if they could move so like call this like the light and dark saga and then in between like this saga and the next saga they they do like that to like try it out and if that works well which it's kind of going back to um what they used to do with like you know curse of osiris and war mind and Mm -hmm. house of wolves and but i think we have we have higher standards now based on what we've seen them do so they would need to step it up but i do think that would be very good for the overall health of the game yeah i i think that we need to again that's a conversation i think for like post lightfall or not post lightfall 
proposed final shape that Bungie needs to explore. In fact, if that was the model they shifted to after final shape was out, like for the DLC for final shape, I don't think any of us would like argue with that. We'd be like, Oh, okay. That makes sense. If you're like prepping the next big thing, like to wrap up DLCs and whatnot, but I think yeah. like that would like be like better perceived value. I don't know. Maybe you stretch the rewards track out to like two hundred or two fifty or something. Um, I think that bright Ingram should be a little bit more frequent, especially when you get past the level cap. Like there, there's so much things you can do with the battle pass, but and I think some of the stuff in the store definitely needs to be mixed in. We need to get you know maybe some Ingrams for these seasonal events that we get, um, like for. Um, Festival of the Lost and um, Dawning and things like that. They used to do that, and I think we need to get back to that. Um, yeah. So that's that's all co- that like that's that's all fine and dandy. Um, any like any final thoughts here before we shift on to our last couple of questions? Um, I don't think so. Like I, I, I feel like we covered this pretty that, in depth yeah. for most of the episode. Yeah. Yeah, because we, 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 we've kind of talked about this over the whole whole thing. Oh, yeah. Like, we, we've definitely talked it's about like this. like, I do think uh, we're all complaining because we were all v- very happy when they shifted from the two little expansions to this. And now we want it reverted back. But I I don't think seasons are, are bad. I just think no. they need to be shooken up a little, little bit. Yeah, we this, this has worked a, fine for a couple of years. To, it's time for something this, new. Yeah, this, and just don't have all of the vendor screens look identical to uh, <laughs> to the last one. Yeah, it was it was a little rough. And I think you're golden. Um, so Ronnie had one more question. He he had a non game question. What performer or band would you like to see that you haven't seen before? They have to still be alive, but don't have to currently be touring still be alive um i would love to see andre 3000 okay that that's a respectable answer he is one of my biggest like inspirations and favorite people ever so yeah um god i am like trying to go through my mind of like who i haven't seen that i like because i used to work at a sports arena i got to see a lot of live concerts Ooh. Um, so I've seen most of the performers I want to see, and I saw like a lot of them in their prime. Uh, I was fortunate enough to see Tom Petty when he was still touring. I got to see Pearl Jam. Um, I think the only group I didn't get to see that I really wanted to see was the who, uh, that would probably be my answer. Um, I, lo- I love the who, um, absolutely awesome. love them. Probably my favorite classic rock band of all time. One of the greatest musical acts of the 20th century. Uh, I would say them or the Killers. I really love the Killers, and I have somehow missed them on every fucking tour they've ever done through Dallas. Um, you, you, you got to get in the next one. God, I got to get in the next one. I, I have to. I have to at this point. Um, I feel really blessed that I got to see Foo Fighters uh, a couple years ago. They hadn't been to Dallas in 10 years. I got to see them on the last tour, so uh, thankfully I got to see them play with Taylor uh, before he passed away this year. Um, oh, see Metallica yeah, a couple awesome. times. Um see god i saw red hot chili peppers that was really fun um in that realm i've seen blink 182 blink 182 was awesome Uh, i saw him on the first reunion i was thrilled uh could not afford the second reunion so i'm really glad i got those 20 dollar lawn tickets the first time they got back together um i was still in high school and it was a weeknight i had to convince my parents to let me go to it and totally 100 percent would do it again uh, that was how I kicked. That was actually the first day of senior year of high school for me was seeing the reunion tour. Um, That's a quite the first day. But this, like my my, I think my all time favorite act I've gotten to see. This wasn't part of the question, but my all time favorite act that I got to see that um, <laughs> feels a little weird to say now, but it was back before he was completely like batshit insane. Uh, you saw Kanye. I got to see Jay Z and Kanye on oh, Watch J- the Throne. Kanye. Oh, I'm jealous. That is maybe like the greatest three hours of music I've ever seen performed live. I bet. Um, I mean, that's two of the uh, of the the, the the like Kanye is crazy, but he, no, no, nobody can deny that he is amazing at music. 
Yeah, no, that was that was that was incredible. That was like that was the height. That was the height for me um, of him. And I mean, I I love Jay Z, so that was really cool. They performed so many songs from the album, so many other individual songs. I've seen Jay Z like three or four times now. Um, oh, shit. They were all really cool. Uh, he came through the arena so many times uh, when I worked there, so that was really cool. There, there was that, that must have been a really awesome job. To have. It was an awesome job. It, I mean, it was. <laughs> It was stressful. Uh, I was a floor supervisor, but it was really cool how much I got to see. Um, so, anyways, moving along, <laughs> we, we have other questions. You still have other questions, damn it. Um, I don't know how to pronounce your name, so forgive me. Um, but, uh, <laughs> God, how do I say this? Uh, I'm trying to figure out what your abbreviations stand for. Fight. Oh, it's like fight your demons. Fight your demons. Thank you. There you go. Fight your demons. 820. If they gave dungeons challenges, what do you think some of them would be? Um, giving dungeons challenges, I think, is an inevitability to like, give them like more of a lifespan. Like, I would not have run duality as many times as I did without needing to get a storm chaser. But I mm. think that, like, because I, I normally tap out on, like, raids and dungeons around, like, the 15 run mark. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm tired of running this. So I usually do it so many times in the first couple weeks it comes out, trying to get the meta weapons and now trying to get patterns and stuff. I think that giving them challenges would be really great. But some of the specific challenges, I mean, I think that's kind of hard because we, if we're talking about, like, past challenges... Um, you know, it's all the challenge. It's not like, oh, make it through Deathless. It's, you know, it's always something like, oh, activate oh, like do everything this fight at once. in a weird way. Yeah. yeah. So like, <laughs> what... like, you do this in a weird, inconvenient way. Yeah. Um. So I don't really know how to answer that. To be frank with you. Um. I mean, maybe one for prophecy would be like to never leave the boss's circle in the final uh, stretch. Uh, yeah, like don't room. don't don't get like teleported back. Don't get teleported back. Like you can't your stacks can't get above like collectively can't get above ten, uh, something like that. Um, I don't know. Like don't dunk. You have to dunk. Uh, but those the colors that you dunk are always like random too um yeah i don't know duality uh i mean i have a feeling it would just be like the same strat that everybody already does on most everything um yeah i, I don't know like i think we don't really have to think about it. i want to i want to circle back to this after we do the new dungeon and think of what some challenges yeah. might be this might be it's something that we have to tackle next week they built like mo most of the the dungeons in the game are built in a very like linear like only one 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 way to do it way yeah so like I, hmm. I i need i need to play around with a new dungeon and i might be able to have some answers just the other ones i've yeah. we've done so many times that i can't think of like different ways to do things anymore yeah yeah um Let's see here. Oh god damn it. Are you kidding me? Sorry, I am I'm seeing something uh right now. They are doing a collector's edition for uh Star Wars Jedi Survivor and it comes with the Cal Kestis lightsaber. Oh. Um and how uh, much is that? Like collector's box. $200. I'm two hundred dollars. <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm looking to see. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> How much? Three hundred dollars. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so for for reference, I bought the Cal Kestis lightsaber at Walt Disney World back in March for a hundred and fifty dollars, and it was it looked way better than this does. I'm gonna be completely honest. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I I to be fair, it's gonna like you have a different attachment to yours because you went there and like built it. I mean, mine also, like, if you were to buy another one, you could make it the, the double blade hilt. Oh. So you have you have two different pommels. You have the regular pommel on the end, and then you can have the destroyed pommel also. So, man, it looks really fucking good. This, I, I cannot understand 
paying this much for. That's absolutely insane to me. Anyways, <laughs> moving moving right along before I uh, before I sit here and uh, critique this more. Our last uh, our last two questions both have to deal with comp. So I need to ask Joe, have you played the new comp mode yet? I've literally played, I think, one or two matches. Okay, I have not played <laughs> new comp. So, Andre, I'm really sorry. We're going to have to skip your question. You asked if you have played it, how do you feel about 3v3 comp? I have not been able to jump in yet. This has been actually, and this has been a busy week. It's going to be a really busy weekend for me. I am hoping to get some comp in early next week, like maybe right after reset. Um, before next week's episode, I want to I wanna play some comp, see where we're at. Um but dealer also wrote in with a question and this is this is a topic i wanted to talk about uh what do you think of 3v3 rift for competitive so 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 kids let's pull up a chair it's it's time to have a talk Um, so i think i think the competitive mode in general would have gone over a little little bit better for me if it, it was 4v4 but that's just my, okay. My uh, s- sell me on four v four because I played uh, I played OG Destiny two PvP when it was four v four, and nothing has made me quit this game quicker than that did. So three v three, I think for the game modes they chose isn't the most fun because the maps are very big for three people in that kind. Of, like so the 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 thing for me that works about like trials or like a little elimination on these maps is normally you 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 guys just kind of run to uh, the middle or run to like a certain lane and like duke 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 it out these but like rift rift like i don't know something felt awkward about it to me okay 3v3 okay but i'm also like i don't really play a lot of pvp so I'm not the person to ask about this. <laughs> so, 3v3. 3v3 Rift. I don't hate the idea of 3v3 Rift. I think the execution was piss poor. So this was... I don't know if this was actually weighted inequally or they just saw like everybody have a collective meltdown, rightfully so, over this being the predominant mode in comp. Um, I want to know what has possessed... Bungie, to think that we need Rift in every single mode. Rift is fine. It's fine. That's the most I can say about it is it's fine. Rift in Destiny 1 was a goofy party mode, basically. Um, Nobody took it super seriously. I also don't think like D1 had as much of like a competitive scene, of people yeah, trying no. to make it into a competitive scene. I-, I think the first thing we have to understand about Rift is I don't think that Rift is bad to add into this like on paper because i am a fan of i don't think comp should just be who can shoot each other quicker i think there should be so i like and i am i realize i'm very much on an island here i like objective based modes i however do not know if this is the right thing for a competitive playlist to interject to it like right off the bat um i think that so what, what do we have in there we have survival we have showdown and we have um rift, rift right yeah but basically it's just rift because there's like a book <laughs> and it just keeps showing up so that has thankfully been changed okay. um right. that has been nerfed pretty severely into the ground from what i understand i do think there needed to be something a little bit different than just standard survival because then it's like well what's like really different from trials um yeah i think that new comp also has to make us wonder what's the future of trials um i think something like maybe instead of putting rift in you could have put in like zone capture um i think that may have been a better one like how zone capture trials pops up occasionally i think maybe if that was like a permanent mode that would like be a little bit better uh, for three v yeah. three, um, yeah, not not in trials itself, but in comp. I don't know if I'm really screaming for Rift to be pulled out, but there are going to be some people who simply do not want to play objective based modes, and I can see totally bouncing. 
Um, I think that this will turn a lot of people off to the new comp tiers who otherwise would be pretty interested. And I don't exactly blame them for this either. Because my first thought when I saw 3v3 Rift being in comp was, really? Um, and I'm not... I'm not, like, anti-Rift. So, I think there, there's a few different ways you could have handled this. I think this was probably the worst way to put that in there right at the relaunch. This is something maybe you float, like, I don't know, in a month, in, in like, a season or two. Not a month or two, in a season or two. Maybe you float this a little bit. Um, I think to put it in right away is, it's not bold. I think it's a little reckless for a game yeah. that is struggling to retain a competitive fan base and like a competitive pvp fan base um we, we were playing with dealer a couple weeks ago dealer who asked this question we were, we were playing trials with him and he was telling us you know the stats about how trials was looking and you know like flawless pool and this and that and like that was when it was split up because there was uh there was uh solo trials going on at the same time also and like we kept matching with the same teams the the pool was I so small that i matched up against <laughs> joe and we were in the same Discord talking. We weren't we weren't playing together, but we were in the same Discord talking and we matched up against each other. Like that's how small the player pool was. Like we played the same teams. There were two or three different occasions where we played a team we had just played like a match or two earlier. Um I've said it for a while that I think that like trials needs to shift to um card based, a card based system where like, oh, you need to match up somebody who's like trying to go for win number three, for example, if you're on win number three. Um, I think not that comp- on your first game and match up with somebody on their, their lighthouse game. Yeah, that's fucking stupid. I think it's that so um, like survival, you know, we've already talked or comp, we've already talked about how like there need to be reward, there need to be more rewards, and like I, I'm gonna come once I've played some comp, I'm gonna come up with some better ideas. But I think that one of the things you look at with that also is that you're not matching up against people who are in your tier either. You're matching up against just random people. Like it's still going for the skill based and not for people who are in your tier. And I think, yeah, like within like a certain amount, of there's no way to see somebody's rank either. Um, And I just think like ultimately all those things combined make rift a really, really bad choice. There are always going to be people who are better at playing the objective. And there's always going to be people who are better at, just slaying out and i think like comp is a measure of your skill i don't know that playing a like basically what was a glorified party mode should be yeah. the thing they're like i would never want momentum control to be in comp for example oh, yeah. um yeah i would i would hate that i don't want swat in a comp playlist right um yeah like call like call of duty has hard hard point which i think is an excellent comp- competitive base mode i think they need so, something similar to that in destiny they need if you're, something. you're locking down an area and you gain points every second that your your, your team oh oh owns that that area and it shifts yeah so uh Dealer, again, I'm going to circle back to this question next week. I want to play a little bit of Rift myself in 3v3 so I can give a better answer, but my gut feeling is, like, I understand what they're going for, but I don't think it has a place in current competitive Destiny 2. This is not something you add in when you're trying to rebuild the bones of a competitive scene. And honestly, seeing this put in there made me kind of go, well, maybe this is where we all just need to accept this is not going to be a competitive game. And I think that's okay. I understand that there are a lot of people who love playing PvP in this game. I know that you're one of them. Um, I like getting in Crucible and hanging out with my friends, but Crucible has become an increasingly arduous experience over the last couple of years. Um, really, like, culminating in the last, like, year, year and a half. It's just been, like, I've, I've noticed that I play less and less Crucible as the seasons go on. Um, I kind of get in, get my pinnacles, and leave. Do any quests I need to do in there. I'll still ha- I hang out in the party modes. I hang out in momentum control. I hang out in mayhem. I used to scorched. be able to hang out in control. <laughs> Can't do that anymore. Um, I like scorched. Fun times. Fucking hate scorched. Um, if there was one thing I could delete <laughs> from this game forever, it would be Team Scorched. I enjoy Iron Banner still. I mean, I still I would rather go play Trials than play regular control at this point, honestly. Um, yeah, I'm also kind of mad that they took out the 
elimination playlist because I thoroughly enjoy the elimination, just ca- casually, not uh, it, in trials. <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 I I'm a little upset about that personally, <laughs> but. Man, I yeah, I I need I need I need to think on this one just a little bit more. I need to actually be able to play some Rift before I can give you like a full on answer. Um, but like that's that's the gut that's the gut that I'm going with right now is like I don't think it needs to be in the competitive playlist and should probably be replaced by something like Zone Capture. Um, yeah. but that's just me because then I, then I think that gives you an objective to still work towards. But if you're able to slay out in time, then you're slaying out. So I think that should, like, always be the option. We, we had some trials matches where, like, him and uh, the guy we were playing with, Rex, were kind of distracting the team, and I was on that fucking point. I was ready. I was on that yeah, point, and yeah, I was still yeah. watching. I was able to hold it down, but most of the times it didn't come to that. I think that if you activated that zone at the beginning of the match, that would make it way more, like, crazy and hectic. Everyone would be Oh, my and God. Play. Yeah. Yeah. Like, maybe that, give it, like, a five-second That would make delay. it nuts. I'd like that, but, like, if you randomized where the point was each match, too. Like, you didn't know until it popped up. There, there are there are things that can be done with this playlist, and I understand, like, this is kind of the first pass, but I don't know if you can wait another three months to do another pass of this playlist. Yeah. This feels like you needed to launch it with some alternatives ready to go, and you probably should have been able to see that Rift wasn't going to go over too well with the competitive scene. And I feel like that's a lot of what I'm seeing is just people being like, fuck this, I'm done. I'm out. I had hopes for this. I'm done. I do think it's a little like wild to say I'm out after like 24 hours. But yeah, if all you got out. was you Rift <laughs> for like your first 10 matches, I'd probably be out too. Also, like the timer is still way too fucking long. It's like the six-man timer. Like, come on, man. Well, and it's the six-man scoring too. Oh, to God, five. that's even worse. It's up to five. Like, Gross. it should be like two two to three max gross it it's to five i was shocked at that yeah they just get, get that out of here copy and pasted <laughs> right over <laughs> yeah it was um i just like i to me with 3v3 it didn't play well like if they made like smaller maps sure but normally like you get the thing and you have to run really really far to dunk it <laughs> Yeah, I'm. And it took a long I'm fu- time. I'm fucking over. I'm fucking over Rift being and everything. Uh, I think that's gonna do it for questions tonight, though. I think we're. I think we're out of here. We are, of course, we are skipping lower corner tonight. There is. I'm sorry. There's no lower corner. Uh, I need the API to update. And uh, honestly, we may just like we may do a little bit of dawning lore this next week. I think we're gonna really wait until we come back after Christmas to like dig deep into the seasonal lore. By then, we should definitely like be api'd up um and i can make up kind of a a flow chart of what we want to do for lore between uh coming back from christmas and light paul coming out you know eight weeks later um (laughs) i will be gone at the beginning of february but uh i can i can leave notes for Corey. so with that we're gonna go ahead and get on out of here guys uh thank you for listening as always joe where can we find you i i believe you have some uh some creative endeavors to plug here for us. Uh, yeah, I, uh, um, I tweet too much on, uh, my Twitter, uh, Joasis LLR. Uh, I make music some, some sometimes just jo- Joasis on Spotify, Apple music, YouTube, anywhere you find music. Um, yeah, that's kind of it for me. Okay, and of course, you guys can find me on Twitter, at Josh underscore Finn, with two N's. Twitter hasn't imploded yet like we all thought it was going to, so I'm still hanging out there for right now. But if I is see that any, a rumor? If I see any <laughs> fucking Nazis coming into my timeline, it's, it's going to be curtains. So just letting you know. Um, and of course, you can find both Joe and myself. You can find Corey. You can find Andre. You can find Nerd. You can find all of us and more. Over on the Tower Casuals Discord, we have some LFGs going. We're going to be setting them up for dungeon runs. We've got some uh, dealer has been hanging out in there, uh, recruiting people to the PvP side of things. Uh, yeah, de- dealer <laughs> is awesome at 
PvP. Yeah, so. that's that's my boy. That's my boy. He's always playing. He, he's he's always <laughs> so. he's always playing. He's always looking for homies to play with. Uh, we've we've got nightfall groups going. We've got raid. We're gonna get some raid groups going with the deep stone weapons being craftable now. I want to do some more runs in King's Fall. Get a few weapons to craft. Maybe do a vow of the disciple. At least boss run. Maybe grab a boss checkpoint and go up there. Uh, I don't really want to go through the whole thing. I just want to shout at the exotic. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and you know we're gonna be hanging out doing everything else any activities that have gotten reprises dares of eternity just got updated i'm sure we're gonna have some people that want to go in there and do that um so come on hang out with us we've got we've we've just got a lot of stuff going on there we got some great discussions happening not just about destiny we've got some other games we can talk about chroma architect has been posting a lot of his cyberpunk 2077 screenshots uh, I know Zhao and I have been talking a lot of Fortnite. We're both really excited for the My Hero Academia crossover coming on December 16th. So I'll be talking about that next week for sure. Uh, and uh, maybe next week we'll share uh, some uh, some tidbits of what we're planning on playing over the break. Some Game Awards recap. Uh, lots of Diablo 4 and Baldur's Gate 3 news tonight. Very excited. Uh, and I believe next week, provided that a life-changing event does not happen for him within the next couple of days. Nerd Generalist will be joining us to close out on our final episode of the year to talk some dawning. We're going to talk some dawning. We're going to talk the uh, the new dungeon. And I think we're going to take a look back on this year in general. So, yeah. From me, from Joe, from Corey, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you starside. Good night, Guardians. Bye. Mmm.